Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. The Nuclear Industries Association of South Africa recently hosted a nuclear compliance workshop. Keith Campbell tells us more. Hi Keith. What was the aim of the workshop? As you know, South Africa still has uh, a, an official program to build uh, 9.6 gigawatts of electricity generating capacity using new nuclear power plants. That figure may be adjusted, it may not be adjusted. but there is an official program to build new nuclear power plants. Now there's a hope that uh, South African industry will play a major role in this program. However, to participate in a nuclear power plant program, companies have to meet certain regulatory and safety standards. And the purpose of this workshop was to brief South African companies interested in participating in the new nuclear power plant program on what they will have to do to meet safety and regulatory standards. The National Nuclear Regulator also made a presentation. What were the highlights? Well, they were focused on the regulatory compliance aspects that uh, companies would, would have to meet. Uh, n not in terms of detail, but in terms of an overview. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, the National Nuclear Regulator is obviously the country's uh, national regulatory body for nuclear affairs. And they have authority over every aspect of a uh, nuclear program uh, when it comes to the nuclear and radioactive elements of that program, and indeed over every uh, nuclear facility in the country, uh, whether or not they're involved in nuclear energy or nuclear medicine or uranium mining, these all funda, fall under the aegis of the NNR. Uh, and that includes the manufacture of components for nuclear power plants. Now, the NNR uh, pointed out that different parts of a nuclear power plant have different levels of safety. Uh, when you come to the reactor itself, of course, and all the associated equipment that includes pumps, valves, pipes, you have to have the highest sta safety standards. But there are other parts of a nuclear power plant that are, are quite well removed from the reactor itself, where the safety requirements are not so high. So first point, uh, made was that uh, com companies interested in manufacturing parts for nuclear power plants should discuss with the NNR what safety context their parts would find themselves in and then they would know the level of, of uh, safety and therefore the standards and codes they would have to meet. There's no point in engaging extremely expensive uh, certification measures if it turns out that your parts don't need those extremely expensive certification measures. Another factor is that the South Africa does not have its own nuclear codes and standards. Uh, so the NNR does not prescribe a nuclear code or standard. The, the NNR requires that a vendor of a nuclear power plant and a manufacturer of any part in the nuclear power plant must have acceptable codes and standards. Ge generally, the codes and standards of the country from which a nuclear equipment is acquired. But they must still get the approval of the NNR that these codes and standards meet South African requirements and are aligned with the South African uh, situation and environment. By the way, when I talk about manufacturing, that includes software. Software must be certified for nuclear power plants as much as the physical um, components of the plant. So basically it was uh, an, uh, uh, a briefing to let the uh, companies know what the kind of things they're going to have to do. Are there concerns about South Africa's readiness to undertake the proposed nuclear program? Concern was expressed about the question of whether or not South Africa has enough skilled 
people to uh, meet the needs of such a large uh, new nuclear program. I fear that there's no, uh, nowhere near enough project managers, nowhere near enough skilled artisans in the country. Uh, there have been uh, past programs to train skilled artisans, which have been highly successful in terms of the training. Uh, the problem has uh, been that the South African economy did not create the jobs uh, for these high skilled artisans, so they ended up having to take lower skilled jobs. And so, inevitably, if you're trained to a high level and you don't get a high level job, your high level skills fade. So the end result would be that they'd have to be reskilled all over again. So th there is uh, some concern that the country doesn't actually have enough skills to execute a program on such a scale. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.